What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're gonna to be breaking down five tips to be a Division I quarterback. Let's get started. Now, before we get into this video, fellas, we are gonna be traveling out to six more states across the US for two day long QB and wide receiver camps this year. Next up on our camp tour, we are coming out to Cleveland, Ohio. Then we'll be heading out to Austin, Texas, Seattle, Washington, Newark, New Jersey, Denver, Colorado, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys are local to any one of those states or cities and would like to train with us for two whole days, fellas, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out to one of our off season training camps. Again, very first link in that description below. Let's get back Back to this video. Now anybody watching this who's a high school quarterback, a youth quarterback, you guys know that there are thousands and thousands of quarterbacks who are extremely talented across the country. You know you go to any like big college camp, any big you know showcase camp, which I think is a total scam, but nonetheless you go to any camp where there's a lot of quarterbacks. There are a lot of guys who are extremely talented. T-shirt and shorts, they can rip the ball, they have a strong arm, they're dead accurate, all of those things, but what separates those five-star top tier power five players from just the regular average high school quarterback that maybe doesn't even end up playing college football? And usually that's a highlight tape. So the first thing that uh, every single Division One coach looks for in a quarterback is having an explosive highlight tape. Now you hear that word like explosive. Now that like usually relates to you know a receiver or running back you know running the ball 80 yards breaking a tackle. That's an explosive play. How can quarterbacks be explosive? And there are two things that you want to showcase on your highlight tape to stand out to those high level coaches. Number one that's going to be arm strength. So we have probably literally a thousand videos on this channel all based on arm strength and how you guys can get your arms stronger, the right mechanics having to do with arm strength. That will benefit you so I highly recommend you checking those out if you need to improve your arm strength but also you can improve your arm strength by improving your leg strength and your core strength I think everybody knows that quarterbacks get a lot of power from their hips their hip rotation so strengthening your core and strengthening your base are one of the two best things you can do besides throwing mechanics to make your arm stronger now the other thing that they're looking for on tape is extend playability so if you guys can get out of the pocket and throw on the run move in the pocket throw off platform those types of plays stand out on film and those are plays that other quarterbacks across the country cannot make. Those are actual highlights. They don't expect you to make those types of plays and that is what's going to make you stand out in the eyes of a Division I coach. Now, another thing too, fellas, you got to understand that a highlight is not just a touchdown pass. If you got a wide open receiver over the middle, nobody around him for 10 yards and you throw him a ball, like, yeah, that's a great play, but that's not a highlight. You know how many quarterbacks can make that exact same throw across the country? Literally thousands. So, Fellas, let's be focused on making explosive plays. Let's showcase that arm strength because at the next level, you guys are going to have to make throws like opposite hash comebacks. You're going to have to throw a timing 10 yard out opposite hash to your weak side. All of those throws require arm strength, so that's what you have to be able to show on the tape and that extend playability. All right, guys, so now the second thing that I want to talk to you about is height. So I would be completely BSing you if I didn't say that your height mattered when it comes to being able to play at the next level, especially the Division One level, because your height definitely, definitely matters in, in, in the respect of that it gets you in the door, right? I know plenty of tall guys. And, like, and again, it brings me back to the very first point that we made in this video. There are thousands of quarterbacks across the country, and usually they're probably pretty big sized, right? So it's pretty intimidating. Like a guy like myself, like I'm five foot nine, five foot ten on a good day, like I'm not that guy. Guy that's going to turn a lot of heads at a college camp scenario. Like, I'm not going to walk into the building or walk into the field and coach is going to turn their heads and go, oh, who's that guy, right? Because I'm not the biggest guy in the world. That's just the fact of the matter is. I had to let my play speak for itself, right? Now, a lot of guys have the luxury of being six foot two plus, and they're the guys who are going to turn the heads. They're the guys who are going to get the first look. And that's just the fact of the matter how it is. But that doesn't mean that they're 100% guaranteed going to get all the attention from the coach because I know plenty of tall guys who suck who can't throw the ball. Like, I, there's, a, there's a classic story of when I played football. He was a seven on seven tournament I'm probably five foot seven at the time and I'm playing a quarterback who's six foot seven right like a whole foot taller than me right and doing the coin toss it's hilarious because he's a whole foot taller than me and that guy didn't do anything after high school didn't play college football didn't do anything because he sucked he wasn't good and at the end of the day who's going to get the job done on the field right and that's what it comes down to now listen if you're five foot eight 140 pounds, it's going to be tough to get any kind of attention from a Division I school, but that doesn't mean that you can't play college football. That just means that the odds are definitely stacked against you. So the thing that college coaches care about, they're not recruiting basketball players. They're not looking for the guy who could dunk. They're looking for the best football players. So if you're on the undersized side of things, you got to be the best damn football player on your team, in your county, in your grade. Whatever you think the, the best damn football player is, that's what you have to be, and that's the only way that you can make a lane for yourself. Now, you also have to be athletic. You have to be a dual threat if you're going to be on the shorter side of 
things. Now, the reason why I go through this whole spiel is because you can't control your height. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says about diet, what you eat, your sleep, whatever. If you're going to be tall, you're going to be tall. If you're going to be short, you're going to be short. That's at the end of the day how it's going to be, and you can't control it. So why, fo- why not focus on the things that you can control? And you can control the effort you put in, your work ethic, how much better you get, the plays you make on the field, your highlight tape like we talked about in the last example. Don't focus on the height. Don't worry too much about the height. Definitely matters, but that doesn't mean it's the only thing that matters. All right, guys, so now the next thing that I want to talk about the Division I college coaches will look for in their quarterbacks is their size, their weight. How much do they weight? How big are they, right? So we already talked about height. We already talked about the highlight tape. Now, does your weight actually matter? And the reason why I want to address this is because it doesn't. I'm going to tell you this right now. How much you weigh the exact pound does not matter to a certain extent. All of these are always to a certain extent. There's always exceptions to the rule. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is there are so many people out there that, like, especially quarterback position, we're going to talk about stuff in the gym in a second, but, you know, quarterback quarterbacks, you're a very unique individual. You're a very unique athlete. We ask you to do a lot of things that we don't ask a lot of other players to do, right? We ask you to throw. You need to be mobile in your upper half. You need to have good range of motion. You need to be smarter than everybody. There are a lot more important things than the size that you have, right? So if you're like, let's say you're, you know, six foot, 165 pounds, like, and you're like, oh, I got to get to 175. I got to get to 175. Somebody said I need to be 180 pounds. Like, don't worry about the exact number. You want to be as big and as strong and as physical as possible, obviously, but that exact number does not matter. Like, trust me, college coaches know that it's very, very hard for males, especially to put on weight. They get that. So if you're not at a specific number, it's not the end of the world. Now, another thing too, when you get to college, they will put weight on you. Anybody that's ever played college football, and I myself included, and I didn't play division one college ball, However, talk to anybody who's played Division One college ball, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA. When you get to that college lifting program and when you get to that college eating and meal plan, you are going to put weight on you. If they need you to put weight on, you are going to put weight on. I'll give you a story about myself. The meals that I would have to eat. Let's say for breakfast in the morning, I would eat four eggs, some potatoes, and then like a serving of potatoes and then a banana. They would make me eat eight eggs two servings of potatoes and two bananas. They would double everything that I would eat. So on that kind of diet, you're going to gain some freaking weight. So don't get so caught up in the exact number because here's the mistake that quarterbacks will make. They start lifting like bodybuilders. They start getting in the gym. They're trying to put on size. And I was the guy who made the same exact mistake because I thought the same thing. I got to weigh a certain amount, right? And you know, they start doing bench, shoulder press, a lot of pressure on their shoulder, losing range of motion. And suddenly your on-field play starts to suffer because you're so focused on getting big like a bodybuilder. Guys, they're not recruiting bodybuilders. They're recruiting the best possible quarterbacks. And that's what you should focus on being. All right, guys, so the next thing that I want to talk about is your ability to execute a zone read. So especially nowadays, especially at the Division I level, especially at any college football level, you have to be able to dominate, or not so much dominate, but be able to thrive in the zone read game. So now zone read, obviously, like let's say, for example, you know, you're doing just a basic RPO. Let's say your receiver on the right side is running a slant. You have this zone read action. You're reading a linebacker. You have the option to pull it, throw it. You have the option to give it, or on some plays, you have the option to pull it and run it yourself, right? So basic RPO stuff. You have to have a knowledge of that specific RPO zone read game and be able to execute it correctly. And that's something that you 100% should work on before you play at the college level, because college offenses, are all switching to that. Every single college offense, you see it, it's starting to evolve every year. Air raid, spread, RPO, zone read, and it's a great system. And if you cannot thrive in that system, that limits the options that you have. So I'm not saying that you have to be Lamar Jackson or Michael Vick and be able to run a 4-4-40 and break people's ankles on a zone read. You don't have to do that. You just have to be smart with the ball. So I highly recommend studying the zone read game and familiarizing yourself with those concepts if your high school team doesn't run it. If your high school team runs it, great. You should already be familiar with it and you should be working on mastering it. But if you're a guy who's maybe in, you know, under center system, let's say it's wing T, maybe you're just, you know, straight drop back pass, you know, West Coast system, whatever it might be. You got to familiarize yourself with those zone read concepts, study the game. So when you get to that college level, there's not a single playbook that you cannot master. All right, guys. So now the last thing I want to talk about that a division one college coach is going to look for in a quarterback, you know, like, let's say, you, you know, maybe you don't check the boxes everywhere. Let's say maybe you're not the tallest guy. Maybe you don't have the strongest arm. Maybe, you know, you're super accurate. Uh, maybe you're not the fastest on the field, but you know, you're a good all around quarterback. What you can do to make up for lack in all those areas is a high football IQ. If you know where to go with the ball and you don't turn the ball over, you're efficient. You have a high completion percentage. You are going to get noticed by people because that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants a quarterback that they can rely on and everybody wants a consistent quarterback. Now, people always ask me, like, coach, how do I know where to make the right reads? How do I know where to throw the ball when I'm back there? I panic. I overthink things. It all comes down from your preparation. You have to do the pre-work before the game. No quarterback who's ever been successful has ever walked into a game 
and just played. They've done the pre-work at a high level. Let's put it that way, at a high level, at a high school on level. You have to know the defense. You have to know their best guys on defense. You have to know their personnel. You have to know coverages. You have to have a general idea of coverages and what are the best plays that work against those so your offense can be structured to those. That's how you can change plays. That's how you can check out of certain things. Look at Peyton Manning for an example. He's a big guy, you know, but not the physically most gifted dude. Like, dude didn't throw a spiral, didn't have the strongest arm, didn't have great mechanics, but he got the job done. He's one of the greatest of all time simply because he was outsmarted everybody on the field. So if you want some of the material that we offer on reading defenses, post that in the comment section below. Just say, hey, reading defenses material, and I'll shoot you over all the stuff we have that can help you out and help you diagnose those defenses. We have like 500 plus videos all on how to read defenses. So just let me know if you want access to that. But again, fellas, reading defense is one of the best ways. If you know where to go with the ball before the defense does, you will be efficient, you won't turn the ball over, and you will have an extremely high completion percentage, which carries a lot of weight. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, if you would like to train with us in six more states this offseason, we're coming all the way from Cleveland, Ohio to Los Angeles, California. Check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you out to one of our off-season camps. I'll see you guys next time.